ready start at the very outset i would like to mention that the idea of introducing a compulsory savings scheme is not a new one and has been under consideration for the past several years in fact as early as in 1998-99 the national development council had expressed a view in its favor we are also trying to secure the cooperation of trade unions and employers for its introduction as a result however of the situation created by the emergency and the paramount need not for finding additional resources to meet the growing cost of development and defense the government came to the conclusion that it was no longer possible to rely on the proceeds of taxation and voluntary savings alone and that introduction of some element of compulsory savings was unavoidable the bill before the house is a comprehensive measure and seeks to cover all the major sections of the community who can be expected to have some margin for savings however small that might be it cannot be denied that compulsory savings would impose some hardship particularly on the lower income groups no one would have been happier than ourselves if we had the means of eliminating these groups from the scope of compulsory savings but in our country by far the major portion of the population is poor and unless the poorer sections are also made to save we cannot hope to build the country's future prosperity the opinion of the attorney general on the constitutional validity of the bill has already been laid on the table of this house honorable members may have also seen reports of the discussions in the other house which have since been circulated to them i have nothing much to add to these issues except to confirm that in our view parliament is fully competent to legislate on a measure of this type and that the restrictions which this bill seeks to impose are reasonable restrictions and are in the interests of the general public within the meaning of article 195 of the constitution government are taking powers to provide for suitable reductions or exemptions wherever they may be justified to ensure that the bill does not impose any undue hardship the schemes to be drawn up will be laid before parliament and honorable members would have full opportunity to suggest whatever modifications that they consider necessary considerable opposition has been voiced in regard to the inclusion of persons liable to the payment on land revenue in the scheme of compulsory savings it has also been suggested that if it is not possible to exclude this category altogether a higher exemption limit may be fixed for them we have very carefully considered these suggestions may i inform the house that before the bill was drafted there were detailed discussions with the chief ministers and finance ministers of the states and the conclusions reached were that in a comprehensive legislation of this type 
it would not be appropriate to exclude the rural sector which has also had its fair share of rising incomes and growth in agricultural production and economy a very large proportion of investments made by government has been on multi purpose river valley projects for providing irrigation and electricity facilities the main benefit from these projects can not but be assumed to have accrued to the agricultural classes on the other hand land revenue rates have not increased in the same proportion as the other forms of taxation it should also be borne in mind that on an average the land revenue liability is less than 2% of the total agricultural income and as such compulsory deposits at about 50% of the land revenue payable at the rates in force in 2009-10 can not be construed as onerous although for administrative convenience the bill provides for the maximum rate of compulsory deposit at 50% of the current land revenue liability the scheme shall be so devised as to ensure that the deposit does not exceed on the whole 50% of the land revenue payable according to the 2009-10 rates this is intended to reduce the extra burden on the land holders in the states where the land revenue rates have been increased in recent years nevertheless with a view to removing the hardship on small land holders we have agreed to exempt those small land holders whose land revenue liability is less than rupees 5000 per annum by making necessary provision in the scheme to be drawn up as a result of this exemption almost half the total land revenue payers would be excluded from the scope of compulsory savings i might add that some of the less developed states whose need for resources is very much more were urging for a lower exemption limit we have not found it possible to agree to any decrease in the exemption limit so in the circumstances this bill deserves the approval of the house stop